Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ben here and today I'm going to do a video about something sort of weird, uh, not typical. Well, I guess it is typical, but it's about uh, giving somebody less credit than they deserve. And I don't mean this to slight anybody. I have great respect for everybody I talk about in this video, but I just think that some light needs to be shed on uh, the Chicago Bulls dynasty of the 1990s. I think frequently I hear uh, different various outlets, whether ESPN commentators, Fox Sports commentators, other YouTubers, uh, they discuss the 1990s Bulls as if it was uh, Michael Jordan doing everything, Scottie Pippen helping a little bit, and basically uh, the rest of the team being scrubs, and they elevate these titles to make it seem like Jordan uh, won championships with his uh, with a blindfold on and one hand tied behind his back uh, without legs. They make it seem like he did these amazing things, which he definitely did. I am not disputing that he put on amazing performances every single night, night in and night out. He won six championships, which is impressive. He is the he is the goat, if not one of the goats. Um, if you don't believe he's the goat, I think he's right up there and. You can't really debate that he's not. I I think that six and zero is amazing, and no one will ever replicate it. Um, that's at least what I think. Uh, but just I think that we have this misconception that Michael Jordan led this team of scrubs to the finals and won it. People often regard these championships like how they regard um, LeBron's finals team in 07. They. I often hear team people say like, well, uh, Michael Jordan didn't really have much help. Uh, he basically just won these six titles and he was the only star player on the team. And uh, I, don't, I really don't think that's true. I think that he actually had some pretty stacked teams. Uh, but people don't really acknowledge that. Uh, and so I just want to get into it today and talk a little bit about it and highlight how those Bulls teams actually had tons of great players and everyone on the, not everyone on the team, but there was a lot of help, not just Jordan. So in the 19, I'm just going to talk about there's two distinct eras. There's a 1991, 92, 93 three-peat, and then there's a three-peat in 96, 97, 98. So I'm going to talk about the core first from the first three championships, and then I'll talk about the core from the second. So the core from the first three was basically a starting point guard of B.J. Armstrong, uh, starting shooting guard of Jordan, starting small forward of Scottie Pippen, starting, starting power forward Horace Grant, starting center Bill Cartwright. Um, so just, and really nothing off the bench. They had Will Perdue, who was not very good off the bench, John Paxson, not much off the bench, uh, really no one else. Um, their highest guy off the bench as far as averaging minutes was this guy named uh, Scott Williams, who averaged 19 points a, or 19 minutes a game, six points a game. So really, no bench help. But um, essentially, okay. So B.J. Armstrong in 1992 to 93 averaged 12 points a game. Um, Jordan averaged 33 points a game with seven rebounds and uh, six assists a game. Let's see here. Scottie Pippen averaged 19 points a game, eight rebounds and six assists. Horace Grant averaged 13, uh, 10 rebounds, and 3 assists. And then Bill Cartwright really didn't average much at all. 6 points a game and 4 rebounds, so really nothing much. But I think that people get caught up and assume that, like, oh, well, really, Scottie Pippen's the only one that has outstanding stats there. But I'd like to remind everybody that um, all five of those guys in the starting lineup were all-stars at one point in their career. The most irrelevant to this is Bill Cartwright, who was an all-star about 10 years before this. But I think it's still uh, an advantage to a team in that if you have a guy who used to be an all-star, that shows that he used to be able to play at a high level, and he has a knowledge of the game that allowed him to play at a high level, and he knows how to play to succeed. So it's just a high IQ guy, and uh, so that's an advantage, I think, in having Bill Cartwright on your team. Uh uh, besides Bill Cartwright, B.J. Armstrong, a point guard, was an all-star the year after this season, averaging around the same numbers, 14 points instead of 12, and like 5 assists instead of 4. Uh, Horace Grant was an all-star the next season, averaging about the same amount of points, I think 14 up from 13, same amount of rebounds. 
Uh, Michael Jordan, obviously an all-star and an MVP caliber player. Scottie Pippen, a first-team all-NBA caliber player and a perennial all-star. So I think when you look at that, I'd say basically um, four guys who have been picked to all-star teams in their primes because you had Armstrong and Horace Grant in the heart of their primes. Jordan, an MVP caliber, caliber player, and Scottie Pippen, a first-team All-NBA uh, caliber player. So really one of the top five by that by that definition, a top five NBA player. So they had two top five NBA players, two All-Stars, and a former All-Star, wily, witty veteran in Bill Cartwright, uh, who had a really high basketball IQ as their basically their last starter and their fifth best player on the team. But to me, that doesn't seem like... Um, like a team that didn't have much talent around him. I'd say three all-stars surrounding Jordan is pretty good, and a former all-star with a really high basketball IQ is uh, really good also. If I had to make some, um, I'm, I want to make some player comparisons just to help people who aren't as familiar with these older teams. If I had to liken B.J. Armstrong to a player in the NBA today, I'd probably make that player comparison like a slightly better version of Darren Collison. A guy who can put up between like 12 to 15 points a game, depending on what a team needs. Uh, assists around five a game. Shoots it pretty well from three and from the field. Uh, in, the, in this season, by the way, B.J. Armstrong shot 50% from the field and 45% from three, which is outstanding. Um, so yeah, basically like a slightly better Darren Collison is who I'd comp him to. Uh, Bill Cartwright, um, you know, just kind of a stand in center who didn't do all that much. I'd say like Aaron Baines for the Celtics would be a good comparison. Just kind of like a body, but not really doing much. Uh, Horace Grant, he's a tricky one. I was trying to think of who I'd compare him to. I'd say like David West uh, on the Pacers. Not David West in New Orleans because he was a much more offensively potent threat. But David West, uh, like in 2012, 2013 on the Pacers. A guy who could put up around 13 to 15 a night, 10 rebounds. Uh, Horace Grant, much better de defender than David West was during this time period, but that's sort of like the player's style that I'd compare him to offensively for sure. Um, Michael Jordan, really incomparable, but if you want to make a modern player comp, I guess you'd say Kobe uh, because they just play so similar. Um, and if you need a more co modern comp than Kobe because you're a young viewer, I guess you'd say like talent wise probably in the NBA today you'd say like talent um, like the best shooting guard in the game is Harden so I guess you'd say Harden and as far as Scottie Pippen uh, Kawhi Leonard is the best comp for him uh, like Kawhi Leonard yeah I just I've, I've made a video before about that so if you need explanation for why they're similar go back and watch that but offensively gifted and defensively at the top of the NBA so I'd say he's Kawhi Leonard the Kawhi Leonard is Scottie Pippen 2.0. But I guess if you look at that lineup, um, look at the, that collection of NBA players now. Uh, Darren Collison, let's put Kobe in there because he's more similar to Jordan. Um, so Darren Collison in his prime, Kobe in his prime, like let's say 2000, 2007 Kobe I'd want to go with. Um, Kawhi Leonard in his prime, so like right now. Um, let's say 2016 to 17 Kawhi before the big injury. Uh, David West, you know, in around 2012, like the tail end of his prime, and then Aaron Baines. So that's your starting lineup. That's a pretty good starting lineup, I'd say. I'd definitely say that that's a championship level starting lineup with the two superstars, two like really good, solid, d definitive starters, and then a guy who's kind of like eh, but uh, just providing solid D and a good IQ. So I don't think that you can say that, oh, that team had like no talent because I think if today you rolled out a team with Collison, Kobe, uh, Kawhi, David West, and Aaron Baines, you'd definitely be like a two or a three seed in, even in the West, in my opinion. Um, that being said, I don't think it's fair that this team gets credit as like Jordan carrying them or as them not being a well-rounded, uh, fully filled out team. Yes, they didn't have much of a bench, but... Um, their starters played a ton anyways. Jordan played 39 minutes a game. Pippen played 39 minutes a game. Grant played 36 minutes a game. So, like, in those three positions, they didn't even really need backups, honestly. Just guys to play about 10 minutes a game while they rested a little bit. 
Uh, moving on to, the, I'm going to move on now to the second era because I think this is a team that people remember more as like the prime Bulls teams. I'm going to look at the 95 to 96 team, which was the best year that they finished 72 and 10, and kind of remembered as possibly the greatest team of all time in NBA history. Uh, so at starting point guard, you had Ron Harper, who was a really good player before he he was a really good player on the Bulls, but really before that he was an offensive. Uh, juggernaut. He was averaging around 23 points a game the season before he came to the Bulls. His average dropped to seven, and he was averaging three assists and three rebounds a game. But still, like a really good player. I'll get into his player comp a little bit later, but he was 6'6 for a point guard, which is amazing. Great height. Uh, great height, actually. Almost taller than any other point guard besides like Penny Hardaway. And uh, a really good defender. Like, not maybe not all defensive first team, uh, but like a guy who was right there, um, one of the best, most annoying defenders to have in the league on you just because of his height and, uh, you know, on the Bulls teams he didn't have to give as much effort on offense so he could dedicate a lot more of his energy to defense. And, uh, yeah, for let's see here. Let's get the exact numbers. The season before he came to Chicago, he was averaging 20 points a game. So that's pretty good, I'd say. Um... All right, so he was starting point guard. Jordan obviously starting shooting guard. Pippen obviously starting small forward. Uh, starting power forward, Dennis Rodman, who this season averaged six points and 15 rebounds a game. Uh, very impressive, obviously, to have 15 rebounds a game. Dennis Rodman, a two-time defensive player of the year, amazing defensive talent. Uh, starting at center, Luke, uh, Luke Longley, who really just another like Aaron Baines as kind of like just plug him in, not really much to talk about there. They did have a sixth man of the year this season and Tony Kukoc who uh, averaged 13 points a game, four rebounds, four assists. Pretty decent. They had Steve Kerr off the bench too uh, shooting 51% and 50% from three which is amazing. You know I can't really equate Steve Kerr to somebody who would be in the NBA now. You know um, I would think maybe like you might, you guys might not remember this player, but he played for the Cavs and for the Raptors for about 10 years. He's Candace Parker's brother. His name's Anthony Parker. He was always like a six-man slash fringe starter for those two teams. He was just an, like a guy who averaged around 10 points a game probably, and he was just a great three-point shooter and didn't do a ton else, but just a great, great three-point shooter. So I'd liken him to Steve Kerr's role on this team. Uh... Ku coach, I was struggling to come up with a comp for him, but I like if you want a modern comp, I'd say sort of like add add five inches to Ginobili, and you got Ku coach is the best I can do. Um, as far as as far as the other guys, I'd say my best Ron Harper comp would be. Probably Drew Holiday, I'm thinking. Like, a guy who really had a lot of offensive talent, but really good on defense, too. A taller point guard. And when he got to the Bulls, he didn't really have to focus on offense as much, so he just put it all in on defense. But, yeah, like, uh, Drew Holiday is my best comp for him. But, like, a really talented guy who I think people forget was as good offensively as he was before he got there. But uh, Drew Holiday, first team all defense this last season. Impressive. I'd say Ron Harper was in that level. I'd say Drew, yeah, Drew Holiday is the best I can think of. I was kicking around a few other guys in my head earlier, but I think Drew Holiday is the best that I'm gonna I'm gonna say for right now. Point guard for Jordan, let's put it at like 2009 Kobe is who I'm gonna compare him to, like the really good clutch Kobe who would always be just make great shots, won Finals MVP with the Lakers. Yeah, you know. Uh, Pippen, I'd say again, Kawhi comparison still valid. And Dennis Rodman, I'd say my best comparison I can make for him would be like, uh, mm, I'm going to, I'm going to probably put, uh, sort of like Andre, like a mix of Andre Drummond and Draymond Green, but for simplicity's sake, let's just say, uh, uh Draymond Green. So I think um, when you look at that, you look at a starting lineup that would, in today's standards of the NBA, look like uh, Drew Holiday, uh, Kobe, Kawhi, Draymond Green, 
Aaron Baines with a poor man, like a slightly worse version of Manu coming off the bench and Anthony Parker coming off the bench. That's a pretty good team. That's pretty stacked. Um, you can go back and look at this team for yourself. Uh, if you don't, if you know uh, enough about the older NBA in the nineties, you'll be very familiar with all these players, but I'm just making these comparisons for like younger viewers who may not be as familiar with them. But yeah, I'd say, uh, a very stacked team, obviously. And again, I'm just going to... This is the conclusion of the video. I didn't have much more to say. I just think that these teammates of Jordan deserve a lot more credit because Rodman was a three-time All-Star, two-time Defensive Player of the Year, led the rebounding, led the league in rebounding many times. Pippen, basically, however good you think Kawhi Leonard is now, that was Pippen in the 90s. Jordan, a better version of Kobe. Uh, Tony Kukoc, a slightly worse version of Manu playing power forward, um, and Ron Harper, Drew Holiday. So I think that both of those teams that I discussed, the 93 team and the 96 team, very talented, um, not a one-man team, not a two-man team. They had about five to six really, really talented NBA players who really could give it to you. Um, that being said, I hope you found this video informative. Hey, you might totally disagree with me on what I said, and you might say, no, Jordan was basically the only guy on the team. I hope not, because the whole reason I made the video is to inform you that that wasn't really the case, but feel free to argue me in the comments if you disagree. But the point of this video is that Jordan actually had some pretty stacked teams, uh, you know, including himself, obviously, but he, he had plenty of talent around him. And they didn't get as many accolades because they were playing with Jordan, but... They were really talented players. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a good day. Bye.